Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad to see you today. Happy Thanksgiving. You know, we like to do things before everything happens. So happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Find a seat if you can, and let's just worship the Lord. Amen? How many of you are ready to just give God all the praise and the glory? He deserves all of it, every single bit of it, every single bit of it. Let's sing together. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of joy. Sacrifices of thanksgiving, and we offer up to you the sacrifices of joy. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise. And give him praise. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart, your voice is raised, your voice is raised, give glory. great time that we can be together today thank you father for this thanksgiving service where we just give our praise and our thanks to you for everything especially for our salvation especially for the gift of your one and only son jesus the christ who came to be our savior and through faith in jesus we are saved everyone who calls on the name of the lord jesus christ will be saved that's your promise you sent your one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life thank you father for that and uh, we just kind of treat this as a little slice of heaven lord where we're going to gather together around the banquet table the wedding supper of the lamb someday thank you for this time in jesus name amen and amen so glad that you're here today what a great crowd and um cliff give us a little bit about what's happening i think we have some good news to share well i certainly hope so well the good news is this is the day the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it amen amen so we have praise the lord uh christy where are you Where's christy there she is come and tell hey. us hey Tell us if what Christy's happened with coming the Bible up quiz. here, we know it has to do with the children's Bible quiz report. Hi, we went to Sara Vista. We went down Friday night and they quizzed on Saturday morning. Um, we uh, had a full team because two kids from Mountain View and they're from Tucson, they only have two on their team, so they joined us. So we ha actually had a full team. Um, Philip and Irene missed one question out of 60. So they had two perfect rounds. So we had tears. And I knew this was gonna happen mm -hmm. because last meet they had three perfect rounds. They didn't miss any. So they both went, they both were crying when they missed one. <laughs> I told Philip, I said, you can't be perfect every time. And he said, yes, he could. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, and Ben, he had one perfect round, so it was really good. They all got their memory awards. They all knew their memory verses. So thanks to everybody listening to their ver uh, Philip Say's verses lately. So since we actually had a full team, they took first place. <laughs> Isn't that great? Praise the Lord. We're proud of our kids, and we thank Christy for her work with our children helping them to really learn the Word of God. Amen? As you entered in this morning, you noticed something was a little bit different. The chairs were not in the typical order. We've got the tables out. We've got the chairs out because following this morning's service, 
we are going to be having a pre-Thanksgiving dinner right here. So, do not leave. <laughs> because otherwise, there's going to be a whole lot of food being taken home. And so everyone is invited to stay for that. No prayer time tonight. So uh, eat well and go home and relax. Now, not this weekend, this coming week, yeah, not next weekend, but the following weekend, the uh, Payson Corral is going to be presenting a Christmas carol. And uh, if you'd care to talk more about it, you can see Kathleen. And she's got the tickets. And it will be Friday night, Saturday, after, uh, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday. Now, on Saturday, the uh, 3 o'clock. We're going to have a bus ride available for everybody who wants to go. Okay, Sunday at 3 o'clock. Uh, excuse me, not Sunday, Saturday. What? Three o'clock, if you care to take the bus over, uh, the pastor will be uh, chauffeuring, and they'll be there for that. And then following that, uh, see if they can find the Christmas lights. So a time after, because it will be dark then, and you'll be able to see the Christmas lights. Advent season study begins next Sunday. And as part of the Advent study, um, got a whole lot of books up here let us adore him now these are six dollars but if you do not have the six dollars and all you have is a ten consider the other four as a donation <laughs> and pastor i'm gonna let you have a word to say about this yeah this is uh, something we like to do every year during the advent season where the whole church family goes through this daily devotional and then my messages on Sundays will be focusing around these themes as well it's a fun time where we can all be together on one page and share this so these are available uh, for six dollars uh, for it's a daily devotional so it's not just a Sunday only thing it's for the entire Advent season and it's really a lot of fun for us all to be to go through this together and uh, be praying together and thinking together as one as we consider uh, what it really means to adore him and anticipate not only remember his first coming but also celebrate that but also his second coming and how we can live our lives to prepare for that moment so i encourage everybody i've got 30 of these books available so uh, there should be enough for one per family uh, if you need to have one of your own uh, let me know um, if you know with your in in a family but you would like to have your own uh, let's make sure everybody gets at least one per family first okay and then we'll start giving out the individual ones pick that up today because it actually starts next Sunday now the good part about having uh, you read that devotion you'll have an idea what's coming up on the message a right. little presentation you know I was thinking coming over this morning on a Christmas carol and they talked about the spirit of Christmas past, the spirit of Christmas present, and the spirit of Christmas to come. Our spirit of Christmas past was the birth of Christ. Amen. Our spirit of Christmas present is the Holy Spirit yeah. that dwells within us and guides us to the spirit of the Christmas to come, that hope of eternal life Amen. and being called home. By God. Praise the Lord. Next Sunday at 4 o'clock, uh, we'll be having the hanging of the greens to transform this into a little more Christmassy. Uh, I had a tendency to get on the top of the ladder last year. So uh, for those that can make it next Sunday, and of course it will be announced again next Sunday because we know a lot of people are going to forget about it between now and then. It's a lot of fun. Pardon? It's a lot of fun. It is. It, it is. truly is. Fun. We eat uh, leftovers. Try, try and figure out which parts of the trees go with which part. <laughs> and if you look in your bulletin, you'll probably see some other announcements which we have not covered. Praise the Lord. Oh, Kathleen. And I even wrote it down on here. 
in the back, there are new church directories. Right. For those of you who have changed your name, changed your address, changed your phone number, uh, changed your email, I, yeah. whatever you've given to the office, that is what has uh, gone into the directory. So be sure to pick one up. And this is also, also one of the things we like to do is give Christmas cards to each other during, during the uh, Christmas season. So you'll have your uh, addresses and names in, in that, and you can bring your Christmas cards here, and we'll put it in a special slot for, for folks and pick it, pick it up. Another great time. Praise the Lord. Well, we are so thankful to the Lord, aren't we, for everything. We just give God all the glory so much he's done for us. Watch this video. For today, for this gift of breath and life, we give you thanks for this church, this community gathered here to worship, give you thanks for your creation, the changing seasons, falling leaves. We give you thanks. For your mercy, for your forgiveness, for your love, we give you thanks. In our weakness, we thank you, for your power is made evident. In our failures, we thank you, for your grace is sufficient. Even in the trials, through the struggles and pain, as you form us into who you want us to be, turning our mess into your message. Today and every day, we give you thanks. Let's sing together. Thank you for giving your life just for me, how 
give thanks to the Lord our God and King. His love endures forever. For he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. His love endures forever. For the life that's been from the Word of God. Amen? His love endures forever. It's a repeated phrase throughout the Psalms. His love endures forever. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad for the love of God today? Amen. Aren't you glad for His providence, how He takes care of us? And He supplies our needs. He, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Aren't you glad of that today? He said, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. And boy, are we going to eat today. <laughs> we do that around here. It's the eighth essential ministry of the church, apparently. So, well, we thank God for all of his providence. This, this song, uh, um, the, the tune may be uh, uh, familiar to you. The words may be familiar. This is an, actually an old Welsh Thanksgiving song. Any Welsh people here today? I think we're about 38% Welsh or something like that. Mostly Scotch, mostly Scott, but, you know, but anyway. Um, um, this is a great, great old Welsh hymn, straight out of the hymnal. Let's sing it together. It talks about God's providence and for the things that we enjoy.
Amen? Amen. But the thing that we're the most grateful for and ought to be the most grateful for is so great a salvation that God has given to us. Even if we gain the whole world and lose our own soul, what good is it? Amen? And at the end, the greatest gift of all is Jesus. And we're thankful to God mostly for that. Hallelujah for that. Thank you, Lord. It means everything to us. We owe God so much. <clears throat> we owe him everything. We really do. We owe him everything. Our life, the 
the, the blessings that he gives each and every day, the food we eat, the air we breathe, and so on. We owe everything to him. He is the creator of all. Amen? And literally everything we owe to God. <clears throat> Listen to the words of this song that speaks of just that. I owe you everything. Jesus, my Lord, I love you. Say I owe you everything for the grace you poured on me. Jesus, I'll give you everything. How can I repay or find words to say? Thank you. I owe you everything for the grace you poured on me. Jesus, I'll give you everything. How can I repay or find words to say? Thank you. Sing it with us. Jesus, I. with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> well, I'm so glad that you are here today. <clears throat> I wanted I wanted to have more people to say thank you God. <laughs> Lots of people to say thank you, God. <clears throat> Turn with me in your Bibles, if you would, please, to Psalm 96. Psalm 96. Psalm chapter 96. Almost in, in the middle of the Bible, not quite, but almost. Psalm 96, and if you would, please stand with me, if you can, in honor of the reading of God's Word, the Word will appear on the screen, but it's always nice to have your Bibles open as we're looking in the Word together. Psalm 96, verses 7 through 9, and then the very last book of the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Ascribe to the Lord... All you families of nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. 
worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. And then in, in Malachi chapter 3 we read, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Amen? Father, bless your word today as we come to this Thanksgiving celebration. May your word be planted in our hearts and to where we uh, it makes a, a, a difference in us. It helps to shape us. It helps to mold us. It helps us to know how you want us to live for your glory, to ascribe to you the glory that is due your name. Bless us now, Lord, as we look into your word together. In Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen and Amen. You may be seated. So glad that you're here today. <laughs> For well more than a year now, close to a year and a half, we have emphasized our desire as a church family to prove our great love for God, to express our great love for God, and our desire to accomplish His will and purposes. As a church family, we have been focusing our attention on the seven essential ministries of the church, the seven clearly biblically founded principles that we see that God wants us every church to develop and implement we've been focusing on it now for a long time and that is the very first one is what worship it's the chief end of man to worship the Lord everything else that we do is as an act of worship unto the Lord so we begin as an essential ministry of the church with worship and then evangelism how many of you believe that God wants us to be sharing the gospel with people it's a primary function of the church it's what we it's who we are it's what we do evangelism sharing the good news with others assimilation bringing people into the body of christ and helping them to find their place of ministry within the body of christ discipleship that's a no-brainer jesus said go and make what disciples of all nations in other words make as a follower of jesus make more followers of jesus that's the command straight from the lord pastoral care we want everybody within the church family to feel that they are cared for by the church family not just the pastor but the whole church family the pastor's only one person and can only be at one place at one time but the whole church family can be providing pastoral care for one another amen and when you have that sense of care, that people really care, I'm so glad for those who make the phone calls and send the cards and do all of that. But we want to expand, and we will be expanding the pastoral care. Church planting, we see very clearly that God wants us to help plant new churches, not only here but around the world. And, of course, finally, the buildings and the finances. I'm so grateful for the buildings that we have, and I'm grateful for the tithes and the offerings that you give in in order to make the ministry uh, 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 successful. So God has revealed to us clearly in his word, his plan, his vision for what he wants us to accomplish for him and for the building of his kingdom around the world, for the glory of his name. Ascribe to the Lord the glory do his name. And folks, every single one of you can have a part of that. Amen? Every single one of you can have a part of that. We love God. How many of you love God and are so grateful for his grace and his mercy and his forgiveness? We love God. We owe everything to him. And one of the ways that we show our love to God is through our tithes and offerings through the offerings that we bring, through the generous giving that we did, that we give. Our nation, the United States of America, was clearly founded on biblical Judeo-Christian values. Do you believe that? 
Our nation, from its beginning, was founded upon clear Judeo-Christian values. The Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, everything about our nation's founding. And, and because of that, because it was founded on our nation, uh, uh, on Judeo-Christian values, biblical values, God has blessed this nation. Amen. God has blessed this nation in the past. There is no doubt that our nation has been extremely blessed by God in the past. And Americans, as a result in the past, have been some of the most generous people in the world. Much of world mission happened because American Christians and churches sent missionaries throughout the world. Amen? We have been uh, some of the most generous people in the world. But something is starting to happen that disturbs me and disturbs many. Recent studies show that this spirit of generosity is quickly dissipating, is quickly dissolving. The thing about it is, is as our, and we see a direct correlation as our biblical and Christian values are eroding in this nation, so has the spirit of generosity. People are becoming more selfish and self-centered and self-focused. As the biblical and Christian values dwindle, so has the spirit of generosity. There's a recent study, a Barna research study. Some of you know George Barna and the incredible study that he, he and his organization does. And he really has a handle on what's happening within the churches and within America as in, in general. A recent Barna research study shows that only 25% of U.S. American adults believe that generosity is extremely valuable. Only 25%, let me repeat that, only one in four now of uh, U.S. adults say that generosity is important to them. That's sad, isn't it? It's sad and it's disheartening. The next question is, is who are the 25%? Who are the 25% that still say that generosity is important? Folks, it's the Christians. It's the church. It's the believers. It's the followers of Jesus. True Christians, followers of Jesus, instead of being tight-fisted and self-focused, true Christians tend to be extremely generous. Amen? Instead of being tight-fisted and selfish and self-focused and gathering for self, Christians tend to be very, very generous. And, and, and that's because of the lavish, generous love of God. The lavish love of God, the generosity of God. Our hearts have been transformed by the love of God. Amen? Our hearts have been changed. God has forgiven us of all of our sins through faith in Jesus. The heavy load of guilt is completely lifted off of us as we experience the generous, the generous love and forgiveness of God. He has given us the gift of eternal life. We have been saved by God's great grace and his lavish love. We have been changed from death to eternal life. Amen? We owe everything to God because of God's generosity towards us. Guess what? We tend to be generous to others. It's a fact. It's a part of who we are as believers. You see, folks, we see the first thing is that giving is an act of worship unto God, isn't it? Giving, generous giving, is an act of worship unto God. In Psalm 96, we read, Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. And then it says, Bring an offering and come into his courts. You see that? Worship and giving all go hand in hand. Giving is an act of worship. When we give, folks, we're actually giving glory to God from where it came from in the first place. 
We give to God as an act of worship because of what God has given to us. Amen? We give to God because of what he has given unto us. Folks, uh, make this a foundational thought in your mind. Always keep this in mind. God is the creator of all. Everything originates from him. Amen? He is the creator and the giver of all. The food we eat, the water we drink, the air that we breathe. Everybody take a moment, just a second here. And I want you to just take a deep breath. Ready? On three. One, two, three. You just received a gift from God. Amen? You all just received a gift from God who created that. I want you to think about this. The greatest gift of all. We're glad for the blessings, all the earthly blessings and everything, but folks, the greatest gift of all is our salvation. The greatest gift of all is our salvation. The greatest gift of all is God's life-saving mercy, forgiveness, and grace. I want you to think about this for a minute. You can gain the whole world. You can gain all the wealth of the world. You can gain all of the world's riches and, and things. But folks, when you stand before God at the great white throne judgment, none of that is going to matter. Are you with me? None of that. All of the world's wealth, all of the world's riches, all the world's possessions, none of that is going to matter when you and I stand before God. When you and I stand before God at the great white throne judgment, the only thing that will matter will be what you did with the gift that Jesus offered to you. The only thing that will matter when you stand before God is what you choose, what you chose to do with Jesus, the greatest gift of all. Amen? So it doesn't matter all the wealth, all of the world's riches, no amount of money, power, position, title, achievement will matter at the judgment seat of God at all. The only thing that will matter is whether or not you have accepted God's gift of his saving grace through faith in Jesus Christ. So you see, folks, the greatest gift of all is salvation. Amen? I guarantee you when you breathe your last breath, there is no U-Haul behind the hearse. Amen? It's all left behind. And the only thing that will matter was what you did with Jesus and whether you have received that most precious gift of all, his finished work on the cross in your place. The reason that we bring offerings to God, folks, is to worship him and to thank him for this most greatest gift of all. Amen? It's to give him, it's to thank him for this most precious gift of all, the gift of his saving mercy and grace. Because without that gift, without receiving that gift, every single one of us would suffer eternally and hopelessly lost for all eternity in hell. Are you with me? So you can understand why, why we, give, we give. And to, we give to God in thanksgiving and gratitude. We give generously to God from a heart that is filled with gratitude because we always remember what God has given to us. I love the words that King David wrote in Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, 
slow to anger. Aren't you glad for that? Slow to anger and abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. Boy, I'm thankful for that one. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Hallelujah. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Aren't you thankful for the gift of God today? And for all that he has done, we give generously. We give generously because of all that God has generously given to us. We owe everything to God. We give because of who we are. When we give, we're just expressing who we are. What are we? Who are we? Folks, we are followers of Jesus. We are Christians. We are the redeemed. We are those who have been given a brand new life, made new by the love of God, transformed hearts. Folks, the Bible tells us that we are now God's kids, adopted. We're his children. Amen? We are children of God. And because of that, we are now called by God to be a reflection of God and his character. Is God generous? Really, is God generous? Has God been generous to you? Is God generous to me? Lavish? When we give generously, folks, we are simply reflecting the character of God. Amen? When we give generously, we are simply reflecting the character of God. We become more like Jesus. Was Jesus generous? Was he? Was, Je was Jesus selfless? Was Jesus sacrificial? Come on now. Was Jesus driven by a heart of compassion for the sake of others? Driven by his care and compassion and generosity towards others? So when we give generously, folks, what are we doing? We're just becoming more like Jesus. Amen? A reflection of him. We give generously because it shows our faith in God, our trust in God, who said, I will take care of you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus said it best, don't worry about tomorrow. You know, that gives me great peace in my heart when I don't have to worry about what's up ahead. Why? Because God's got it. He knows what's up ahead. He's already got it. And we can just rest in him. We don't have to worry about the food that we're going to eat or about the shelter or any of these things or what we are going to wear. What did Jesus say instead? Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And what was the promise? And all these other things will be given to you as well. God is going to take care of you. Amen? And it gives you great peace in your heart. We give because our whole focus has been changed. It's like in Colossians where it says, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. And so that's why we focus, our whole focus has been changed. Folks, giving is an act of worship unto God. It's an act of faith and trust in Almighty God when we give. Amen? It's also an act of obedience to God's will. 
Once again, our scripture lesson says, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him and come into his courts. So it's an act of obedience. God said, bring your offering. So it's an act of obedience. And then we say, well, what kind of offering? <laughs> Back in the Old Testament, the offering that God demanded was the blood of lambs and rams and goats and bulls. Aren't you glad we don't have to do that anymore? Back in the Old Testament, blood had to be shed. The people brought these animals as their offering to be slaughtered right there in the temple courts. And the blood was sprinkled against the altar as an offering unto God. Because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sins. Right? The wages of sin is death. And so death has to occur in order for there to be forgiveness. That was God's demand. So back in the Old Testament, they had to bring the, bull, the bulls and the and lambs and the, and the goats and the, all those offerings and, and, you know, and then it was a bloody mess. Okay? And those animals had to be the very best. It couldn't be the leftovers. It had to be the very best from their flocks and from their herds to be, to, to be offered unto God. Aren't you glad, folks, that we don't have to do that anymore? Okay? Aren't you glad that we don't have to do that any longer? Our Savior, Jesus Christ, became the perfect blood sacrifice. Come on now, there ought to be a hallelujah there. Jesus Christ gave his own life's blood for the perfect sacrifice for us all. And our faith in Christ and his shed blood on that cross is what brings us into a right relationship with God when we believe. Amen? Our faith in Jesus satisfies God's wrath against us and saves us from all sin and guilt. What a wonderful gift that God has given to us. And so when we bring our tithes and our offerings to God, we bring them in what spirit? As a spirit of worship and gratitude and thanks to God for his great sacrifice. Leviticus 27:30 says, "A tithe of everything belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord." When we give the tithe to the Lord, we give it in response to his blessing to us. Amen? We can never repay, but it's something that God said, this is what I want you to do as an act of worship and as an act of offering your, uh, your, your thanksgiving unto me. It's what Abraham did. How many of you know that, that Abraham, I think he kind of kicked the whole thing off. Our father Abraham, you know, back in the Old Testament. In Genesis 14, we read about a, a priest of God, a minister of God, if you will, giving Abraham, uh, giving his blessing to Abraham. And the scripture says Melchizedek, the, the king of Salem, which later became Jerusalem, right, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God most high. He blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abram by God most high, creator of the heaven and the earth. And praise be to God most high, who delivered your enemies into your hands. How did Abraham respond? The scripture says he gave him a tenth of everything that he had. It was, a, it was a response of, of thanksgiving for that blessing from God. And just he was just prompted to give a tenth of everything that he had. It's what Abraham's grandson did, Jacob. How many of you know about Jacob? Okay. Who later become, became what? His name was changed from Jacob to what? Israel. Okay. It's what Jacob did, giving God an offering. Of a, of a tenth of everything 
that God blessed him with. In Genesis chapter 28, we read of, of Jacob saying, if God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey that I am taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you what? A tenth, a tithe. That's where tithing comes from. That's kind of the foundational principle, the concept of where tithing comes from. Giving that, that an offering of 10% of whatever God blesses us with as an offering unto God, an offering of thanksgiving. And it's being obedient to the will of God. Leviticus 27, 32 says, Every tithe of the herd or flock, every tenth animal that passes under the shepherd's rod will be what? Holy unto the Lord. You know what holy means? The word holy means set apart. Set apart unto the Lord. A tenth set apart unto God as an offering of unto God. Once again, our main scripture lesson, Malachi chapter 3 says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be what? That there may be food in the house. That there may be food in my house. That there may be blessing for the nations, blessing for the people. Amen? That there may be plenty in my house. So we see that giving a tithe is an act of obedience to God's great, wonderful gifts and to his will. But most of all, we give, folks, because we want to accomplish God's salvation work in the world. Amen? We want to see the good news get out to the whole world. Giving. God, God gave us a very, very clear commandment. A mission if you will to accomplish to accomplish his life-saving life-changing work around the world Jesus said what all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me therefore go and what make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. Folks, that's our marching orders. That's the mission of the church right there in one or two very simple verses. And I want to tell you something. I have become more passionate about this as the older I get and the more that I see the love of God and his desire become passionate. And we here at Pace and First Church of the Nazarene are committed to that task. That's our mission. That's our marching orders. Amen? We're committed to that task. And every offering that you bring is committed to that mission. Every tie that you give, every offering that you bring is committed to that task. So then the next question would be, can you trust this church with your tithes and offerings? Now there's where the rubber meets the road, right? Can you actually trust? Very few people trust so-called nonprofits today. Would you agree with that? Very few people trust so-called nonprofits today. We're constantly bombarded with television ads that are begging for money all the time. You've seen the ads with the puppies with the sad eyes. How many of you have seen the ads with the puppies with the sad eyes? Right? Okay. We've seen the ads with, with the animal welfare groups or, or veterans help groups or political action groups or capital campaigns or crowdfunding for this or that or the other thing. It is a well documented fact, folks. Let's hear me now. It is a well documented fact and proven that most of these organizations, the largest percentage of those donated funds go to overhead costs and advertising. That's why they have such great ads on television, because the funding is going into the ads so that they can get even more money. 
and, 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 and for only $19 a month, you can get a blanket, right? The largest portion of these donated funds go to overhead costs and, I hate to say it, but to enrich themselves. The greatest majority, one so-called nonprofit group bought, you heard on the news, bought a huge mansion in Canada and in California, right? They took the funds that were donated and they bought huge mansions with it for themselves. Okay? Only about 8%, listen to me now, only about 8% of one well-known veterans group actually reached the veterans that were in need. The rest of it all went to, 92% of it went to overhead costs. Amen? And now, it has come out that a very well-known football star and a charity that they have actually gave less than 1% of the donated funds to a so-called charitable cause. And what was the charitable cause? Yoga for women. Can you bring that back up again, please? I've got a video I want to show you. Huh? Sorry about Nazarene this. Missions is a movement of God through the people of God. This movement is funded through the generous, sacrificial giving of people and churches throughout the world. World Evangelism Giving is the foundation for discovering, developing, and resourcing our missions organization and has enabled the Church of the Nazarene to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to unreached people and places. It is the cornerstone of our denomination's missional funding, with the largest portion of giving going to missions work in the Nazarene regions. These funds enable the regions to effectively implement church planting and discipleship strategies through local churches and ministries. Every church and individual in our denomination participates with their financial contributions to world evangelism, binding us together with a unified purpose and vision. Because of your giving, the Church of the Nazarene is able to develop and sustain worldwide communication, technology support, and new mission programs. All Nazarene missionaries, regardless of deployment status, benefit from the mission's foundation created by World Evangelism Giving. Each missionary receives support, such as funding, insurance, and missionary care. Nazarene Missions International, Nazarene Youth International, Work and Witness, Global Missions, and many other ministries are supported by World Evangelism Giving. Independently funded ministries like Nazarene Compassionate Ministries, Jesus Film Harvest Partners, and World Mission Broadcast also benefit from the infrastructure it sustains. Through your giving, new churches worldwide are able to make an impact in their community. Those funds also train and equip pastors and church leaders in these churches. Pastors like Rafi, who fulfilled his call to ministry after escaping war-torn Syria. Today, Rafi and his mother Lena have started two Arabic-speaking churches in Poland. Your giving funds clergy development and ordination in the Church of the Nazarene and makes holiness education available worldwide through Nazarene institutions of higher education. Your giving provides resources and literature in more than 90 languages to churches all over the world. This includes resources for pastors and Bible-based teaching materials for children, youth, and adults. Because of your giving, schools like the Armstrong Primary School in Cote d'Ivoire are impacting their community. 
School children are being taught Christian values, and the students and their families are being reached for the Lord. In Mark 12, we see the beautiful example of a widow giving abundantly. Jesus calls his disciples and points her out as the one who gave the most, because she gave all. Our focus is not on how much we give. We give because we believe in a missional God who is at work through our Nazarene missionaries, reaching places and people we can't even imagine. We believe in a God who moves, and that belief, deeply seated in our hearts, moves us to give. We are a global church, a generous church, participating in the transformational love of Jesus Christ in our local communities. Together, through our world evangelism giving, we share Christ's love with the world. One hundred percent of your tithes and your offerings giving here goes to accomplish the mission of God, not just here in the Rim Country, but around the world. Amen. One hundred percent, not eight percent, not less than one percent. One hundred percent. Amen. And it goes to kingdom values, eternal values. So when we talk about the seven essential ministries of the church, the seventh one being the buildings and the finances, this is talking about the finances and what we do for the kingdom of God. You can trust this church with your gifts of thanksgiving that you give to God. It's all about God's mission and vision okay we talk about the worship everything that we do and give is an act of worship unto the lord we talk about evangelism the second essential ministry of the church leading others to faith in jesus glo lo locally and around the world we will do our best in the power of the holy spirit to lead as many as possible to saving faith in jesus because folks that's eternal amen that's eternal it's not temporal it is an eternal decision that every person needs to make assimilation we want to bring as many people committed uh, 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 in, to become a part of our, our church family and become an, an essential part of our church family discipleship this is obvious we've committed ourselves to following the Great Commission that of making disciples spirit-filled Christ-like followers of Jesus around the world the pastoral care we want everybody to feel a part and loved and cared for by me as your pastor and by everybody within this church family a wonderful spirit of love really it is like the acts chapter 2 that we read about where they gave themselves to the apostles teaching to the uh, to the the breaking of bread into prayer meeting together in each other's homes and doing that folks is the pastoral care amen we want to be a part of that church planning it's biblical it's biblical it's what god expects us to do so we, you know, we, we ask ourselves a question. We'll, are we going to help plant a church in Guasave, Mexico? You know, is this where God is leading us? It seems to be, but we're not sure. We're testing. I have a meeting this afternoon, a Zoom meeting by computer with the mission coordinator, the, the, uh, the, the mission um, uh, area coordinator in Mexico to talk about that. So we're, we're going to be thinking about that or somewhere else in the world, okay? And, of course, our buildings and finances. We have the most beautiful facilities, church facilities in all of the Rim Country. Wouldn't you agree? We have the most beautiful facilities, but we also have room to, to grow. If the Lord leads us, you know, we're thinking, well, do we want to build a worship, a proper worship center? Okay, let this be the multi-purpose room, and we're thankful for it. But the original thought was that we would have an actual worship center out there closer to the beeline. We don't know. We want to follow the Lord's leading. We want to keep it beautiful. We want to, we want to make sure that we have enough money to pay the utility costs and, and provide toilet paper in the bathrooms. Aren't you glad for that? 
Okay, that's all a part of it, right? It's all a part of the mission of the church, making sure that the lights are on and that, that there's heat in the wintertime and, and cool uh, in the summertime. And we sure do love to eat around here, okay? God may lead us to build that proper worship center. He may lead us to use some of our 14 acres for other future ministries. He may lead us to add future ministry staff. We're considering, uh, uh, um, not just considering, we've taken steps to, to, uh, to bring Ardo, Sarah's husband, here. There she is. I knew she was out there somewhere. Okay, And to, to help re, rebuild our our young adults and our youth ministry okay tremendously talented young man i'm so impressed with him in my conversations with him <clears throat> god may lead us to help build a church building somewhere else on the mission field right okay but, you know i we i need to say this and tillman can attest to this we do our best to be as conservative in our spending as we possibly can. What's that? We do our best to be as conservative. We're not, we're not wasteful in any means. We continuously come under budget, and we need to keep it that way and be very conservative, but we do have a budget to fulfill. In order to keep doing the ministry, we do have a budget that needs to be fulfilled. And that budget need right now is about $3,500 every single week. And you're thinking, man, that's a lot of money. $3,500 a week. It may sound impossible. But folks, nothing is impossible for God when everybody does their part in fact i believe that we can actually do far greater than that as everyone follows the will of god amen as everyone follows the will of god and you give from a heart that is filled with worship and thanksgiving unto, ha unto god we call it thanks giving amen it's thanks giving and we do it every single week the point is folks we give generously because we want god's eternal purposes to be accomplished while there is time god gave us a very clear promise bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be what food in my house and he's not talking about just physical food he's talking about the blessing of god and the ministries of god and all of the work of the kingdom that happens bring the tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in the house and then god gives a promise he says test me in this how many times in the bible do you ever see god saying test me he usually said, doesn't say that anywhere. In fact, we're not supposed to be testing him. But here is one place in the Bible that God actually said, test me, try me, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there won't be enough room to store it all. As we give with hearts filled with thanksgiving and honor God with our tithes and our offerings, then God does that with it. Amen? He does that with it. Do you believe in the promise of God? Do you believe that if God promised something that he will honor his word? God has given so generously. We owe everything to him. We can never, ever, ever repay what God has done for us. But folks, we can give generously to him with a heart filled with thanksgiving. We can respond to God with the words of Psalm 111, 17 that says, I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on 
the name of the Lord. Amen? I've given you now 40 sermons. This is the 40th message in this series that the Lord gave to me to give to you when we started into this seven essential ministries, seven essential uh, systems of the church. It's who we are. It's what we do. It's what we're going to focus on. It's what we're going to flesh out from now until Jesus comes. Okay? Everything that we do is going to fit into one of these seven. And now we're going to do number eight. And that's eating. <laughs> Amen? Let's worship the Lord. Shall we close this service? Our, whoa, we have something... We thank God for his watch care over us for sure. Praise the Lord. Would you stand with me as we sing this song together? I know you need to stretch your legs. We've been at this for a little bit. But we need to sing this song to give God the glory. Once again, I hope that you'll stay, that you'll not run off. Be sure to pick up your your uh, devotional book as we go into that study together. Let's sing this together, shall we? How can I say thanks? our praise and glory praise the lord praise the lord we want to shift gears here and and get ready to bring all the food out and uh, so hang around stay stay close and let's give god the glory he's faithful amen forever god is faithful forever god is strong God.